Howdy champs, my name is Mohit uh, and guys uh, the project uh, that we are going to discuss today is uh, creating crazy stars, shooting stars uh, in different colors and everything that uh, you will see in a while was actually done only through the script. Uh, for the same reason guys you can notice that uh, I'm using my own workspace. I'm not using the animator, the classic developer, the essential of the small screen but I'm using uh, Mohit space and in Mohit space which is my own preferred uh, custom workspace you can see that uh, I'm not using the timeline simply because this specific project does not use the timeline at all everything that was done everything that will happen happens only because of uh, the programming language that fires flash guys that's action script 3 so uh, in fact let's discuss the action script in a little while but before that I would like to show you a published preview so here goes control enter on my keyboard guys crazy uh, stars for you shooting stars <coughs> okay now this program was essentially created to show you how to create random colors more than other things this project actually this flash file does a lot of things it does it is uh, doing the tweening from one point to the other but uh, most importantly what it's doing is the colors that are being generated which are actually being pulled out from the library are pulled out in a different color every time uh, they tween from one position to the other so actually uh, strictly speaking this is uh, a do developers uh, program it's uh, not a designers flash project and uh, it uses uh, some uh, you know uh, concepts of action script 3 which are a little difficult so it's not exactly for beginners and novices okay and for a novice so guys if you think you have the gut uh, if you don't have a leaky gut and if you can absorb whatever I'm gonna throw uh, your way then uh, this tutorial is for you otherwise you can uh, skip it right now if you're a beginner um, you don't know the basic concepts of flash and action script 3 give it a skip guys but if you are into it okay uh, to some extent then uh, this is for you <laughs> okay now uh, so again guys I'll be opening up the actions panel and explain the action script to you but keep in mind this project uh, has been essentially developed to show you how to create a random colors now I've been uh, toying with this idea for a long long time and I feel in the end I've actually come up with a program that's uh, foolproof that will randomly create a generate you know that will generate a random color for sure every time because there have been so many tutorials done on creating ra you know random numbers but that's that's child's play I wanted to do something different something uh, more difficult right so let me uh, close the uh, publish preview and let's jump inside the actions panel coding time guys <coughs> all right now let me open up the actions panel guys there's absolutely nothing on the timeline for that same reason I'm not showing you the timeline and uh, if we were to check the library okay that is the interface that you may be seeing on your system may be set to essentials I'm set to my own custom uh, workspace for that reason it looks a little different you can manage your own workspace guys easily anyways I'll not show you how to do that right now all right so as you can see uh, there's a symbol in the library that it's a symbol of a star okay and uh, I'm not going to show you how to make a star I'm assuming you know that and guys I've done an AS linkage so just by uh, you know drawing a star and converting it to a symbol AS linkage will not happen <coughs> to do the AS linkage uh, all you need to do is you just write you need to right click on the symbol you need to go to properties uh, you need to say export for action script and you need to give a class name anyways let me cancel that and once you give the class name guys the AS linkage will appear here now this name star can actually be used uh, in the action script to pull this star from the library onto the stage guys as you can notice out here the uh, stage is completely blank is black in color blank and black okay completely black and black there's nothing out here in the library we just have one single star and there's absolutely nothing on the timeline 
Okay, just one single frame. That's, that's all that it has. It has nothing on the timeline. Everything that we have out here is uh, inside the actions uh, panel. Cool. Now let me expand the uh, actions panel for you. Okay, so you can actually have a good look. Give me a minute. Right, right. So guys, as you can notice out here, that uh, the we are using 23 lines with few blank lines here and there. So it's not a very big script, guys. Okay. Now, these are a few classes that uh, get uh, imported automatically when you're writing the code. Sometimes they don't and you have to manually write them. Okay. This got imported when I was actually coding. These two lines I had to manually write. Anyways, let's see what we have actually done. Now, guys, again, the focus is mainly on how to create random colors. And guys, let me tell you, the colors in Flash, the colors in Flash, okay, uh, appear something like a 0x and then the hex code. Maybe a FF, GG, a 99, something like this. Okay, so 0x is always the prefix. Uh, guys, if you use HTML, this 0x is usually replaced, is actually replaced by mm, a pound sign or a hash, as some people like to call it. But uh, when you're working with the flash, the colors look like 0x, and then you have the hex code of the color. Anyways, let me get rid of it. So guys, I've created an array. Now, array is a collection of values. And this array is actually holding all the values that you'll find in a hex code. So, if you actually have uh, a good look at the hexadecimal codes of colors, you'll find that it has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it has A, B, C, D, E, F, right? And that's all that it has. You wouldn't find a G ever out there. So, basically, uh, from 0 to uh, the letter F, it's actually the color spectrum, okay? So, when colors are formed out of the hexadecimal chunks, they would in include only any of these uh, characters and nothing outside this. It will never have a Z. It will never have a Q for cubic. It will never have an M for Mohit. Right? So whatever it will find as far as the alphanumeric characters are concerned are actually inside this array. My array. Right. Okay, guys. Instead of using the timer class, I'm using set interval. And uh, there are times I actually like to use set interval, although the timer class is much more powerful. But the reason was that I find uh, the set interval much more u easier to use in uh, certain situations like this. Anyways, so through the set interval, I'm making sure that I'm firing off a function, which I've named my function. And uh, I'm making sure that it's firing off every 100 milliseconds. That's one tenth of a second. Now, let's see how we actually create the function. That's function, my function, parent, parent. And inside the opening and the curly braces, guys, this is the function that's firing off uh, <coughs> the effect, the shooting stars, the crazy colorful stars that you just saw. Okay. Now, let's see what is actually inside uh, lines 9 through 20, which is the body, 22 rather, which is the body of the function. What exactly is inside it? Guys, I've actually uh, declared a variable, my str, that's my string, and I made it equal to 0x. Now, guys, I just told you that every color actually starts with 0x. So that is the reason uh, I put a 0x out here. And then, guys, I'm adding to it my array, and then this is the index number. Okay. Now... I know it's a little difficult to understand. If I were to multiply math.random into 15.5, what would I get? I would get a random number between 0 and 15.5. And if I were to uh, pull out the integer of it, it will give me a value between 1 <coughs> and uh, 0 and 15 rather. So this Everything that you see inside the square brackets out here is, in, f in fact, nothing but a value, a numerical value, between 0 and 15. This int for integer makes sure 
that the number does not uh, pull up a fraction. This formula ensures that we are pulling up a number between 0 and 15.5 and if you put an integer out here, no fraction, so we'll get only whole numbers, okay, between 0 and 15, okay. Now, if I were to pull up from my array and, uh, you know, out here, if there would be a number between 0 and 15, it would pull up randomly any of these values. So, if it were a 0, it will pull up 0. It, if it were a 15, it would pull up F. So, depending on what you get out here, because we are generating numbers randomly. So, my array and whatever is inside the square brackets is actually the index. This is the index 0 of the array. This is index 15 of the array. So, it will pull up any of these values, guys. And if you notice out here, I've done it six times. That's one, that's a two, three, four, five, six. So, basically, six characters would be added to 0x. So, if we were to pull up six characters from the array, so it would look like something like, you know, a 0x, a 2, an a, a b, a 4, a 6, a 2, and ultimately, and everything has been extracted from the array. Basically, six characters have been extracted from the array and added to 0x. What you actually get inside my string is an alphanumeric value that looks like the color. The color in the format that you actually have, that you actually use in Flash. If I were to just, uh, for the testing purpose, trace my string, let me say trace, uh, my str, which is my string. Let's see what it actually pulls up. Have a look out here, guys. <clears throat> it actually pulls up numbers in the exact format in which we actually get the colors. Right. Cool. So, guys, I'm actually using a formula which is able to pull up uh, alphanumeric values and store them into my string. And those values resemble the hexadecimal code that we use uh, for colors in Flash and ActionScript 3. <coughs> cool. Now, guys, uh, let's see what else we have done. We have declared a variable my color of the type color transform, data type color transform. If variables hold colors, then the data type is color transform. Okay, so this is the instantiation. instantiation right creating a new instance of a variable but uh, and out here i'm actually feeding a color to it and the color that i'm feeding it is the is my str and my str is nothing but the new color randomly being generated in line number 9 line number 9 uh, creates a new color every time the uh, function my function pi is which happens after every 100 uh, milliseconds cool so my color then stores the value of my str through the color property and then guys let's see what is happening out here now declared one more variable my star and i made it equal to new star and guys if you remember out here this symbol this star symbol has an as linkage done to the star so basically the variable my star is storing a new star inside it right <coughs> and then bigger part guys and then i'm adding it to the display list or adding it to the stage so basically lines 14 and 15 let me change it 14 out here and 15 create and add a star to the stage or the display list i'm not so sure how many of you actually know the concept concept of uh, display list anyways and let's see what line number 17 does so once the star has been added to the stage and by default guys it gets added to the left top corner let's see what line 17 does uh, we have declared one more variable mc and which is equal to the ninth child on the stage when i say get child at nine basically it means that the child or the star which is at index number nine so since so many stars are getting uh, generated <coughs> randomly it'll pick up the one which is at index number nine once it does that guys <coughs> i beg your pardon 
I'm using uh, the my star dot x and my star dot y x and y properties guys to randomly place them at different positions let me actually change it to 550 which is the width of the stage guys so math dot random into 550 and math dot random into 400 make sure that they are within the bounds of the stage 550 by 400 are the width and the height of the stage guys so I'm using the X and Y properties and randomly placing the stars within the stage well almost <laughs> almost and you'll see what I mean <clears throat> when you actually run the program why I say well almost because there'll be times it'll slightly uh, overshoot the stage and get uh, chopped off anyways let's see what else is happening out here then guys I'm using the transform property in the color transform sub property and I'm making it equal to my color and guys if you remember my color is actually equal to my str which is randomly a uh, generated color so basically I'm giving the my star which is being pulled out from the library guys two lines 14 and 15 it's being pulled out from the library being placed on the stage at a random position with a random color lovely so random positions random color and guys through uh, tweening in uh, action script 3 so basically using the tweening uh, tween class in action script 3 uh, and I don't know how many of you actually know that but if you do you you, uh, you would know what I actually mean uh, you know out here so I'm, I'm actually tweening the MC and MC uh, guys notice is uh, equal to get child at nine. So basically, the ninth star on the uh, stage it's pulling up uh, any one of the stars and then it's tweening its X and also tweening its Y. And uh, so basically, that's giving that motion of it flying from uh, one position to the other through the tween class guys I'm not gonna go into the details as I said uh, this tutorial is of difficulty moderate I'm not saying too difficult but yes it's not a it's not for beginners uh, it's not for people who are starting out I'm assuming that you know a little bit about the tween class I'm assuming you understand the display list I'm assuming you understand the area I'm, I'm actually not got in, gone into the details of uh, all these concepts uh, I'm assuming that you know how set interval works very uh, close to the way uh, the Tama class works guys but uh, uh, still not quite and look out here guys I'm using the remove child at now remove child at is again a concept that we use uh, when working with this playlist is making sure that I'm actually removing one stars out, out of the total 10 stars that are being thrown uh, onto the stage through lines 14 and 15 that will ensure that you will never get the 11th star on the stage so it will be within the you know the total stars will not exceed 10 stars it will randomly pull up one star and remove it from the stage okay and the result is what you are going to see in a minute when I hit control enter <coughs> let me uh, expand the viewing area to full screen and then probably you will have a much better look so guys, uh, no more than 10 stars. Every star has a different color, a different location that's being produced randomly. All right. So crazy shooting stars, guys, done only through Action Script 3. I don't know actually what, what will be the application of this, but uh, this tutorial uh, emphasizes the power of uh, maths.random. It shows you how to create uh, random colors. There have been so many tutorials done on creating random uh, numbers. That's child's play. Let's do something uh, much better than that. And this is one such tutorial, guys. So, guys, I hope you liked this tutorial, enjoyed it. Uh, I would love to see you very soon with uh, yet another Flash and Action Script 3 tutorial, guys. You have a very good day. Bye-bye. Peace.